The Taming of the Scots Tongue by Robert Lindsay. In this poem, <clears throat> myself, Robert, and a good friend, Wallace, will be reverting to our Scottish accents. We'll read one verse at a time for you, and I hope you enjoy. This Robert has a tale to tell. Now <clears throat> listen good and learn it well, for who can tell for whom the bell will <laughs> for you tell? <laughs> when mother tongue's removed, you lose your soul. Can I remove your tongue? <laughs> now let me tell your book, my lot, the evolution of a Scot. I'm every canny to cannot. Yonder to there, from Kuthi Saint, so my kin, tied debon to debonair. <laughs> I've trained my memory to block, to twit and eat and ask you what. And all because I am a Scot of native breed. For sake of comprehension, I did concede. You didn't bother telling me to learn your English ABC. I've even changed from Z to Z to please you lot. Oh, what a tailor to my traitor to my kind I've come to be. To force my tongue and heart and mind with suffering brain and teeth and grind. Oh, You've no idea how unkind it feels to me to speak out like an ounce's fine OBBC. Bloody midges. For Scots accent cannot win. And now that's, I've shed that's some... That's the English bit, Wallace. Oh? That's the English Oh, sorry. <laughs> Try the BBC Scotland accent. OK. For Scots with accents cannot win. And now I've shed so many skins. With polite company, let me in, and let me speak in borrowed terms and emphases, supremely meek. But why did Scottish King James I not point a great big scary gun and kick some ass and kick some bum of English foe to make our accent overcome when gain the goal? Bloody bitches. Poor times. As the first king of British Isles, no, 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 Wallace. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, this one. <laughs> Made Parliament his tune to dance to learn the old Scots tongue perchance by King's decree. Don't look askance. Oh, that's pretty good rhyming. <laughs> rest in all, rest in all plaid till I've no be in this grand prance or masquerade. Oh, I like these words. <laughs> <laughs> As for, Wallace, just read. As first king of the British Isles, mm. he could have ordered all with smiles. He could have saved us Scots our need of tongues to stitch and rebel English poncy heads thrown in the ditch. Yeah. Boy, this is my verse. Instead, we all been anglicised, but pithy Scots is bastardised <laughs> in ancient past romanticised and kept as fan for windbag, bledder and tourist guides with their mass to run. <laughs> Our kilts remain, and bagpipes play, Woo! but scarce we get the time of day, an English tone will come what may be understood, reverting in our whiskied days, that's dizzy days, not days, mm. we're seen as rude. Yeah. We now, we squeeze with fairy frown, our accents hard, our gullets down, a loon to tunes, a man about toon and trues of legs and kill all worm like cheery clowns and whiskey kegs. Okay. I've said my piece. You didn't get it. My pragmatism say I regret it. Now we all speak like English twits. Forgive yeah. the pun. Yeah. Our souls are strangled in despite of panic bun. Yeah. Get off me, old mother. Get off me. Get off. Yeah. I had good... <laughs> I'll start again. I had good King, I had good King Jimmy had the blows. The gate. Boss. Oh, I good King Jimmy had the boss to gay the Scottish, the English <laughs> Scottish jaws. The words would speak, and one man and ah like Rabbi Burns, <laughs> and poetry sing out afar abroad for his Scottish bards. 